Welcome TDC viewers, in this video I will be converting an aqueous solution of copper sulfate to sulfuric acid or electrochemistry. The electrode that I will be using to carry out this reaction will be a graphite substrate lead dioxide anode. As you might be aware from the previous videos I have made on this, a lead dioxide electrode doesn't disintegrate when used. Therefore, being very durable for electrochemical processes that are very oxidizing in nature, Obviously, platinum and other dimensionally stable anodes are exceptional for these processes, but due to their high price, a search for a less expensive, yet highly active material is mandatory. First, get a graphite substrate lead dioxide anode from the previous video I made. Notice the top part of the electrode is broken. This was because I accidentally dropped it, but this shouldn't be a problem for us as that part of the electrode is not going to be submerged into the solution. Then cut a copper foil that fits into a plastic pipe exposing the bottom part. Next, measure out about 130ml of water and pour into a suitable container. Then get some copper sulfates and finally a power source that delivers 5 volts and 20 amps. To start, get the container holding the water and pour in the copper sulfate into the container making a saturated solution of copper sulfate. It will take a while for everything to dissolve, so I'll skip over that part. After the addition of the copper sulfate, attach the copper electrode with the plastic piping around it into the cell. Attach the clip to the negative terminal of the power supply. This is your cathode. Next, get the lead dioxide electrode and clip it onto the positive terminal of the power supply. This is the anode. After all the necessary connections are made, turn the power supply unit on. As we can see, bubbles are liberating off from the lead dioxide anode. This is oxygen gas. It's difficult to see, but on the copper cathode, copper metal plates out. Now for the in-depth electrochemical explanation. As we can see from the half-reaction equations, at the anode water is being split liberated oxygen gas and hydronium ions. At the cathode, copper ions are reduced to copper metal, which plates out from the solution. As we extend the duration of the electrolysis, the concentration of hydronium ions increases at the anode, and at the same time the concentration of copper 2 plus ions decreases at the cathode, as it is reduced to the copper metal. The sulfate ions are spectator ions, so the hydronium ions and the sulfate ions join to form an aqueous solution of sulfuric acid. Note that copper metal doesn't dissolve in sulfuric acid, so it is therefore inert. After 12 hours of prolonged electrolysis, the solution turns from a deep blue colour to a clear solution colour. This indicates that all of the copper 2 plus ions have been reduced to the copper metal and that the hydronium and sulphate ions have formed sulfuric acid. Ok, now turn the power off from the power supply unit and remove the electrodes from the solution. As we can see, a large mass of spongy copper metal has been deposited over the copper electrode as well as some bits that have fallen to the bottom of the cell. Note, if we were using a carbon electrode, the solution wouldn't have been clear but filled with particles of carbon. We can successfully conclude that lead dioxide electrodes are efficient and durable for this process. Ok, now we have to filter out any particles in the solution using a Butner funnel connected to a vacuum pump.
Get the filtered solution and pour it into a large beaker. Now to test that we have sulfuric acid, add small amounts of sodium bicarbonate into our glass vial and then drop a few drops of the filtered solution. We can see that immediate fizzing ensues. The sulfuric acid is reacting with the sodium bicarbonate to form sodium sulfate and carbon dioxide gas, which is the thing that we see that fizzes. To concentrate the aqueous sulfuric acid solution, we need to boil off the water until we see dense fumes of white smoke. Place the aqueous solution of sulfuric acid to a hot plate and heat. We can see the water evaporating off. After a while, we can see that most of the water has almost evaporated off. As the water from the solution has evaporated off, we can see the formation of a dense white smoke. This is an indication that we have concentrated sulfuric acid. Note the green color of the sulfuric acid. This could be from impurities. Remove the beaker from the hot plate and let it cool. Pour the contents into a glass vial. We can also see the liquid is quite viscous. Concentrated sulfuric acid is a viscous liquid. To the glass vial, add some sugar and watch the color of the sulfuric acid. Let me fast forward a little. As we can see, the sugar turns black. This happens because the concentrated sulfuric acid dehydrates the sugar, turning it into carbon. From this experiment, we can conclude that we were able to concentrate the sulfuric acid to more than 90%. There we have it TDC viewers, we have successfully converted copper sulfate to sulfuric acid electrochemically using a graphite substrate lead dioxide anode. And we have also shown various properties of sulfuric acid.